Hi everyone, my name is Gene and welcome to the Curious Crafter channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this DIY miniature stingray ocean diorama. Wow, that's a mouthful. Uh, well, yes, that's what I'm going to do in this video. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, please remember to like, share and subscribe. And I hope you enjoy this video, guys. So this video starts when I show you some of the steps that I showed you in the previous video with the empty ocean one. It's a similar process, but in this case, I add the stingrays uh, and how you make the stingrays and paint them and stuff like that. So if you want to have a, a, a bit more detail, you can go and watch that video, definitely. But I will repeat most of the steps that I use there and maybe give some extra tips in this video. Basically you start with a little wooden base and then you add this air drying modeling clay. I start by flattening it out on the surface and one of the key things that you have to figure out is how to make it stick to the wood properly. And the way to do that is just to make sure that the wood is completely wet. I then form little ridges which would be the sand ripples that you would find in a, in a shallow ocean. I just make these ridges by pinching my fingers uh, together and then I smoothen this out by adding a little bit of water and then um, rubbing my fingers over the top surface of this. The next step that you want to do is you want to maybe cut off any excess pieces along the sides so that when you create the dam, these won't get in the way of that. So after about uh, 24 hours, maybe even leaving it in the sun or somewhere where it's a little bit warmer, this will dry out and it will look like this. This will be completely hard and then you can start by gluing some sand to the top surface. So the way I did this is by painting the surface with PVA glue and then sprinkling sand on the top of this. So you have to make sure that the PVA glue completely covers the top surface. Uh, any spots that you missed will show up completely white when you added the sand. You can maybe add a base coat, but I found that just adding two layers of sand is completely sufficient. So the sand I used is uh, just a white sand or a light colored sand that looks like beach sand. And then I added quite a thick layer of this because the glue seeps into the sand and then you can glue more of it. The only problem is that the ridges are a little bit thinner. And any excess sand I just pour into this uh, bucket again and then add the stockings and the elastic band around it so I can just use it again and again and again. So you really don't lose any sand, you only need a very little of it. So after you did one coat, just wipe off any excess or any clumps or anything. And then you'll see that some spots may be lighter, like on the edges here or on the ridges, it's not completely covered. And then I just do another layer and it would look perfectly fine after that. I made sure that the ridges actually have some glue on it and also the sides. When you paint it, it forms little streaks and pools, but if you leave it for a moment, this will even out due to surface tension and gravity and things like that. So I just add another layer of sand and leave it for about 24 hours to dry out completely. You can almost not see the ridges because I add so much sand to it. Again, then just wipe any excess sand off because now when you want to create the resin, you don't want any of this sand to go into the resin or be swept up into the water part of it. So the clay I used to create the stingrays is called Fimo clay. It's a oven hardening uh, modeling clay. So I just cut off a little piece of that and then I start softening this up by rolling it in between my hands and then folding it over and rolling it and folding it over. You have to do this quite a bit until it's softened up. Uh, so the clay that I got seemed quite hot when I started with it. I'm not sure if it's old. I think that newer packet would be a little bit softer to start with, but I managed to soften this up enough to work with it. 
There are some different techniques that you can use to soften up all the clay. You can add a little bit of heat. This is also done when you put it between your hands, but if it's really cold where you are working, it might be difficult. You'll have to maybe put the clay in a little bit of a warmer area or something like that. Uh, another thing that I've seen people do is they add Vaseline, a little bit of Vaseline to it, which seems to soften it up quite a bit. I tried both of these. In some cases, I added too much heat and then the clay started hardening and I couldn't do anything with it. And the Vaseline started to break down the clay at some point. So I found that the easiest just to toughen up and, and roll it between your hands. So what I did is I made a very small stingray shape out of this and then added the eyes and this would be the base and then I hardened this in the oven according to the instructions on the packet. So this is what it looks like when you uh, hardened it in the oven and now it's completely hard and I can start painting it. So I wanted to create quite a big contrast between the different parts, especially because this is going to be casted into the resin. So the bottom I painted white, which would be a nice contrast against the dark blue of the base. So the bottom is white and I did about uh, two coats of this. Then I wanted to create some highlights, so I used a lighter colored blue and I dry brushed this onto the ridges of the stingray. So I just wanted to make sure that there's not too much paint on it. So I dried it on a cloth and then tasted it on my index finger and then I went along all the ridges and dry brushed this. I really like this, it really makes a big difference by highlighting the edges and contrasting different parts of the stingray. It also helped to blend the white bottom and the dark blue top. So the next step was to add white spots. Again, what I went for is the contrast in the darker and lighter colors. So I added the spots to the back part of Stingray. So you'll see in nature also some Stingrays have these uh, quite amazing spots on them. Maybe not as colorful as this one, but they are really amazing Stingrays out there. Uh, so you'll see I created two of them. The one has a little bit more curled edges and I really like that one a little bit more. So the resin I used in this project is called Smooth On Epoxy Cast 690 resin. Uh, it's a clear caustic resin and you would uh, mix this in a 3 to 1 ratio. 3 parts resin and 1 part hardener. So I do show the measurements that I used in this first part, although this is not really that important. The most important thing is that you just measure this out three to one. And I start by measuring out the resin that I'm gonna use. I cover this with a lid so no particles fall into it. And then I put it into a little bit of warm water. So this water is just warm to the touch and it helps the resin to reduce the viscosity so that it will mix easier. You'll see that harder is uh, quite a bit less uh, viscous and uh, the resin is, is more viscous. I used an alcohol ink of the color indigo and when you first pour a drop of this into the resin it will be almost a purplish color but when you mix it in and with the heat uh, that this uh, resin generates it turns to uh, ocean blue color but whatever you decide to use uh, be sure to test it out with a sample beforehand so you just make sure you get the right color that you want. So after adding the hardener and the ink, I put this back into the warm water and then I stir it very slowly to mix uh, the hardener, the resin and the ink together. When you start mixing it, it turns to a milky kind of color and then later on it will clear up and you'll get the final color that you want. So this is a very important step that you take this really slow and you are patient with it and you uh, do this slowly because you can easily introduce bubbles into this mixture and once the bubbles are in it's really really difficult to get rid of them. When the resin hardens the bubbles will be in there and it will not look as good. 
I first mixed it in one cup, then poured it back into the cup and mixed the hardener in and then I mix it again there and let it stand for a few minutes. So it's important to cover your hands when you use resin. When I had some resin on my hands, it didn't really affect me that much, but it's always important. So I use some, some gloves for that. First part, as I said, is I just cover the, the bottom part of the sand with a layer of resin and this is just to lock in any bubbles or any particles. I've did a few tests beforehand where I didn't uh, cover the bottom part with a layer of resin and it really turned out a disaster because there were so many bubbles in the block that you couldn't see what's going on inside the water. So when I started covering this bottom part with resin and just let it harden, first no bubbles will be introduced from this part. This layer I then just popped any bubbles with a heat gun and then after a day or so this hardens into what you see here. I then just clean this piece with a cloth, a slightly damp cloth. And then I start to create the dam. So I created the dam with little plastic sheets from old toy boxes and then I just make sure that the inner part of this is completely clean because I don't want to introduce any particles. I wanted to fold this then into a perfect square so that the edges are neat and straight and then I created a nice dam for them. So if you uh, don't have long enough pieces of plastic, you can just add some more of these um, strips and then you want to add it in a way so that all the edges are straight. So you'll see that the extra piece that I put in, I put it on the inside so that the edge on that side would be completely straight. So that the, the joints would be on the corners. Then I create the dam by gluing it on with hot glue and adding this plastic. So once you do this, it bonds with the plastic. So you won't be able to remove it and still have the plastic available for the next one. So you, this is a once off, just do it correctly. Make sure that there's no gaps with hot glue so that the resin will leak out. Any tiny little gap will ruin your project here because the resin will leak out and you will lose the project. So go around this whole edge, make sure that there's no gaps and then you can cut off any excess pieces. I just wanted to make it look neat and tidy so I cut off any excess pieces at the top. Then I stiffened this dam with larger corrugated plastic sheets. I just cut little blocks and then I added it with silicone onto the sides. The reason why I use silicone instead of the hot glue is I found that when the resin heats up, the hot glue will tend to loosen and this will fall off. So if I use the silicone instead, the silicone would not be affected by heat and the dam will stay rigid as I want. I left that for a day. I also use a rubber band along the, the sides just to keep everything in place. Then I used uh, Vaseline just to paint the inside of this dam. It's a release agent for the dam. And then the next step was to add the resin and the thing rays. I used a popsicle stick or a mixing stick for this just to prevent any uh, bubbles to reduce the velocity of the resin and then I added the stingrays into the, the cast and moved them around as I wanted them. I would have liked to have a way to have the stingrays in the mid-water almost or lift it up a bit from the bottom but I couldn't find a way at this time. Since then I've seen some other ways to do that but I'll try that out in future videos. So after 24 hours leaving this in a container where you cannot collect dust on the top or anything or any bugs or something like that it will be completely hard and then you can peel the dam off to reveal your final project and if you were really patient you'll have little bubbles and anything in it.
So this is what it looks like at this point. The next step would then be to cut off any of the ridges on the top of the resin where it glued to the side walls. So I just cut this off. In this case, you can also sand it off and smoothen this out. But I found that in my case, I just wanted to cut it off. It was much, much easier and it looked fine to me. I then cut off uh, any of the hot glue on the edges and I made a straight edge as much as I can there. You'll have a little bit of a ridge at this point, but I found that when I add the glue and the sand on the side, this will disappear in the end. So in this case, I, I did it a little bit differently from the empty ocean one. I started by only putting glue on the wood part and not on the resin part, just to fill up that part a little bit so that it's more even with the resin. And then after that, I'll do a second layer over the wood part and the resin part so that it blends it completely. So I glue all the sides and then I add sand to that. It's really important not to add too much glue because if you do, the sand will sag down and it will create these uh, ugly ripples on the side. So just add a little bit of glue and then sand it and turn it over and just continue this process. After that dried, after a few hours or something, you can add the second layer. In this case, I added glue on the wooden part or the sand part now, and also on the resin part to make it even with the sand that's on the inside of the resin, so that it looks uniform. And this will then cover the ridge as well, so that it looks nice and rounded off. You don't have to worry about any sand that's now on the resin because there's no glue, it will not stick to it and you'll just wipe this off later. Just make sure you don't get any glue on the resin because then you'll have to wash it off somehow. But the PVA glue I think is water soluble so you can uh, correct any mistakes like that. So then I just do a final cover of sand and your project is basically done. I didn't uh, bother by painting the bottom part or finishing it off but this is what it looks like in the end. I was really happy with this result. It really is nice to see the little stingrays in the resin and it creates some visually interesting scenes. I think this would be quite a nice technique to use when creating larger dioramas of shallow oceans with some rocks and harbors and beach huts or something like that. And you can see that the colors of the stingrays stand out quite nicely in this water. There's not a lot of bubbles. If you have something like a pressure pot, you will even be able to reduce the bubbles uh, a lot more. There are some very tiny bubbles that I've found. It's really difficult. Sometimes I get almost no bubbles and sometimes I get a lot more, but this was completely sufficient. You'll see if you look from the top, you can almost not see anything and you have to be really close to see them anyway. But uh, this technique will be definitely uh, perfect for a larger diorama. So that's what I would like to do in the future to have like a, a beach scene. Anyway, so if you haven't followed me yet on any other social media, I also have some other places where I have content like uh, Pinterest or Facebook. Instagram is quite big for me and obviously YouTube and so on. Be sure to follow me there as well. I'm also working on a, a website where I will be sharing more content and then I also thinking of uh, creating a Patreon site soon. So be sure to um, keep an eye out for this guys and thanks so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.